Today we're going to take a look at good and bad camera installations. Now the images we're about to show you were sent to us by a variety of sources. Uh, most of them are customers who perform do-it-yourself installations. And so we're just going to quickly overview what we like, what we don't like, what we would recommend, and we're going to give you some of the tips and tricks that we use over the last 15 years of installing security cameras. So let's get started and let's take a look. Okay, so we've got a nice looking 4K Vandal Dome. They've used the mounting back box on it. I'm not sure they needed to because the cabling clearly has come down from a hollow spot inside the sofa right here. So I'm guessing they use the back box to drop it down past this fascia board right here to give it a better view uh, so this doesn't block any of, of the view. That's possible. Good clean install though, give it an A for sure. Okay, so we've got a vandal dome. It, even though it's inside, it's a vandal dome. You use vandal domes inside, not because they're vandal domes, but simply because they're small. This one has a three and a half inch footprint, so you don't really notice it. It could have been put back in the corner a little bit uh, to make it a little more discreet, but definitely a great install. They either used uh, this uh, crown molding above here to hide the cable, and then they have a hollow spot inside here. But whatever they did, or they have access into the attic space above here, but whatever they did, they drilled a hole through here, brought the cables out, connected the camera, and then just mounted the camera over the hole. It's beautiful to me, I give it an A. All right, yeah, they mounted the, the camera here, but a professional, the way they've just got the cable coming down, and then right over here that we can't see is where the connection with the cable is actually made. And, you know, if they use the weather tight connection to it, that's one thing. But just the laziness of not being able to run uh, the cable, what should have happened was it came up to this seam here. This is a natural seam along the whole length of the house. And if they would have anchored that cable right along this seam uh, between the green and the white and then just come down to the camera, it would have looked a lot better and it had less chance for um, just being an eyesore. So let's give this one a D and move on. Okay, let's take a look at this install here. It looks like they have an old camera that they had mounted here. They brought the ca they brought the cable down this way and then over, and, and it exposes the cabling and the pigtail of the camera. I'm not really crazy about that. I will give them a couple of points because they did use the wa the watertight uh, fitting that goes over the RJ45 connection right here, but. As a whole, it's, it's, you couldn't really call this a professional install. Uh, I'd have preferred that the cable came down, hidden behind the gutter all the way over to here. And then they could have brought it down in the corner here, down to here. And we, it really should have mounted a back box right here, mounted the camera to that. That would have taken all these cables right here, put it in the back box, and you just had a clean black cable running over to here. And that's all you would have seen. So they could have done a better job with that. So I'd give this one... A C. Okay, this is another opportunity where um, the installation could have been uh, simplified. You'll notice you have your attic access right here. So we've got open attic space up above here. So this was unnecessary, uh, honestly. All he had to do is drill a hole right here, bring the cable out through the attic, plug in the camera, push the excess cable and the fittings up into the cavity up behind your soffit, and then take the camera and mount it right over the hole. That would have eliminated all of this. So I'm gonna give this one a C. Okay, cable management. Now this is in someone's garage, but look what a nice job they did on cable management. Everything's tie wrapped, it's ran in the corner the way it should be. The only thing that could have been uh, a little more attention paid to is don't cross your wires like that. That's where the bundles start to look a little strange is when the wires cross each other. If you'll take five minutes and run the cables all in a straight line and tie wrap them, it'll look like large corporations put it in because that's what they require. You know, if you've got a good IT guy wiring a facility, they want to see big strands and pipes of, of their Cat6 cable coming in, down without crossing over each other the way this is. But for a home, this is a good clean install. So we're going to give that one an A for uh, cable management. 
So, I hate it. <laughs> but, look, it just is what it is. It's in someone's basement or somewhere like that. They didn't spend a lot of time. They didn't care about cable management. They just hung a camera while they were eating a ham sandwich, and that was it. So, um, just the carelessness of the cabling at this point, let's give it a D. Let's just call it what it is. But for the area that he's probably surveilling, it's probably just fine. Okay, good clean install. Clearly, this was, they worked with the attic on this. Um, they came in from the attic, so they probably drilled a, a hole right here which put you up into the attic area. You, you send a fish tape up so you don't have to get out to the corners of your home because attic space right out of the corners, you might be down to six inches or something. So you get one of those glow rods or a fish tape or something that you can send it up into the hole that'll put it into an area where you're more comfortable to grab it and then you just pull your cable down. They used a back box right here to mount the camera and bring it down. I think they could have got away without using that, but I do like it because it brings the camera down away from the soffit and the siding, uh, the lip that you've got going on right here. So it probably gives you a little bit better view by using the back box on this install. It's clean, it's done right, we give it an A. Okay, so let's take a look at this install. It's, uh, it's a little different. We can see we're up on a roof. We've got our shingles here. And this right here is an eave going up to a higher level. Looks like the customer's taken a piece of wood, mounted here, uh, mounted the camera to it, and I'm gonna give him some points. This is the pigtail. He used the watertight protector to protect the network connection right here. That's good, but you still leave this exposed. This is an optional 12 volt DC power pigtail right here. Most people don't even use them, but they're on the cameras in case you want to power them locally. But that's exposed to the weather and there's nothing protecting it at all. So, but what they did, let's move to the next uh, image and we'll show you what they did with it. Okay, so you can see um, they, they took the, the, the connection, the watertight connection, and they put it behind the board. Well, okay, let's see what they've done here. It's gonna be hard to tamper with. There's no way real weather's gonna get to it. Maybe some humidity, but up on this roof here, but it's tucked up behind this board. You've got the protection of the fascia right here. Um, and then you've got the watertight connection on the back behind this board. So functionality, I give them points. But just overall presentation, uh, you know, let's give it a B. Uh, let's go C. This could have been done differently and it, it could have looked a little cleaner, but uh, I'm sure it works well for the customer and I'm comfortable with the protection of the connections. Okay, so let's take a look at this install here. You can tell, okay, so this is a new camera, and you can tell they've, they've replaced a new camera with very old cabling. But, you know, I, th some people would call this a service loop. I'd call it lazy. Clearly what they did is they used a, a pre-made cable, and they started pulling from the video recorder to the camera location. So what did that do? It left all the extra excess cable out in the exposed weather right next to the camera. So they just lassoed it up right here, threw some tie wraps on it, and that's, that's how they finished it off. Um, really, they should have pulled from the camera back. This excess uh, cabling, if you're gonna use pre-made cables, let's leave this in an attic space or, or behind, uh, you know, in crawl spaces or somewhere out of the way, not out where the camera is, where it's exposed. They did use the watertight connection here, but as a whole, I, you know, I just gotta give this an F. All right, so what'd they do? They had a single gang uh, recessed outlet right here. They got a blank cover and they brought the cable out the center. They used the watertight connection going into the, the back plate right here and then mounted the camera to it. But it kind of seems like a long way to go when you could have um, just drilled this hole in the cover a little wider, taken the camera's pigtail, made the connection in this recessed box, and then mounted the camera 
right over the single gain cover right here. It would have eliminated the back box. It would have been a cleaner install. And right here, you just snip that and you just took care of that camera. So it's, it's really vulnerable right where you can reach it. So I think they could have done a better job with that. Um, a lot of effort went into it. I'll give them that. Let's, let's go with a C on this one. Okay, a lot of you already know what I'm gonna say about this one. Uh, so they brought the cable in along here, tucked it up under the soffit, that's fine. Then they came into this box. Um, the pigtail from the camera's coming out. This is where your connection is. So again, they get points for protecting it from weather and protecting it from tampering, but this, this could have been a lot easier. They could have completely eliminated this box brought this, this cable right up this groove, this siding groove right here, drilled a one inch hole right here, connected the camera to the cable, pushed all the cable up into this hollow space right here and mounted the camera over the hole. So all you'd be looking at is that beautiful camera mounted right there and you would see a white cable running right down here into that gutter and that was it. So it could have been cleaner. Um, this is going to perform the same as the way I just described. Uh, it doesn't require you to put a one inch hole in your soffit, but it does have this, this cabling or, or this box out here and this exposed cabling. So I think it's a better way. We'll give this one a B for good effort. Okay, um, I like the install. I'm not sure how they pulled this one off to be honest with you because I believe this is a finished residential area above here. You've got your sliding door, your window right here and they've got this mounted without a back box, which means the cable's coming in directly from the back of this camera from the inside. And I'm thinking they've got finished floors top and bottom. So I don't, without looking at it, I don't know how they pulled this off, but it looks good to me. I give it an A. Okay. So now we've got an office environment. We've got drop tile ceiling here. Uh, everyone loves drop tile ceiling because it's easy to work with. It's easy to throw cables. You just throw cables up above uh, the drop tile there. You make a hole in the drop tile and you anchor your camera to it. I've had a few people say, how do you anchor to drop tile? If any, anyone's worked with it, it breaks easy, it's soft. Um, there's not a lot of good anchors for it, I, but I will tell you the secret that I've done for the last 15 years and I use drywall <laughs> anchors, and that's the self-screwing anchors that, that you punch into a drywall and then you turn with a screwdriver and they tap their way in. They'll, they'll work perfectly and they tap their way into ceiling tile very snugly. Here's the one warning with it. They go in great, they hold the camera tight, but if you have to bring them out, the whole, mount, the whole uh, 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 anchor comes with it when you unscrew it. So. That's the one drawback to it. If you're gonna do it, do it right, do it the first time and it'll last forever. Give that an A. Okay, and again, this is more with, the, I'm gonna zoom in here because I really like what they did with this. Again, a uh, very professional installation. I like the way they use the architecture of the building. So they came along and they used the Schedule 40 PVC pipe they mounted to four squares. I like the way they stubbed down and they put this camera here. Now, why did they do that? It's because this camera is watching the dock. This camera is watching them back in and out. This camera has one job and one job only. It's the entry port. So you've got your, you got your mobile access here, your doorbell here. You've got your card reader here, but they got a camera just to cover this area here so they know exactly who's coming and going. This is a good example of the golden rule, one job, one camera. You can't have two cameras doing one thing. If you tried to get this camera to cover this, as well as uh, the docks, it won't do it. You'll end up disappointed with the whole thing. This is the proper way to lay out cameras. That's an A. Okay. Um, you know, they, they did everything right. The only thing, the, the gray does match uh, the siding. That's good. But it would look cleaner if you had to use the white mounting box that's made for this Pro 90D right here. But um, A for effort and quality because it's protected from 
uh, the connections are protected from the weather, they're protected from uh, tampering, and they did mount to the blank cover on the four square, which is exactly what you should do. So that is a really good install. It just would look prettier with the right mount. And they still need to take the plastic off the, the night vision system on the camera. Other than that, good to go. Let's call that one a, phew, let's call it a B. Okay, this is a pan tilt zoom camera. It's mounted on a home. You don't see that a lot. Um, but you know, you see them on homes when you got to cover a lot of ground. That's what pan tilt zooms are for. They used a 45 degree bracket, a corner mount bracket is what they're called. And that bracket is important because what it does, it places the camera at 45 degrees from the, from the each wall. So you can spin this camera around and look down this wall, but you can also spin it around, and look down the other wall. If you just mounted flat to this wall right here, you wouldn't be able to see down the other side of the, of the wall. Um, not crazy about their cable connections here. They've got a straight up exposed RJ40, 485 fitting. 485, RJ45 fitting connected uh, to the cable right here. And then I think they're drawing power off this light right here. That's okay, but this right here should not be exposed. This will fell, moisture will get into this, it will corrode, the camera will stop working. It's just a matter of time. So with that said, you gotta give it an F because it is going to fail. Okay, so we've got a warehouse application here. It's protected from the weather. Um, they did use the weather tight uh, boot that goes on the camera's pigtail to connect the cable. I like the way that they've tie wrapped it. I like the way that they've followed the trusses. So it's out of the weather. It's protected from tamper because it's up high. This actually could be an A for warehouse work. It really is clean, and it's as good as you're going to see in a warehouse most of the time. Let's give it an A. Let's be nice. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you have stressed concrete. They drill. They drilled out. This is this. This right here is from them blowing out with their drill bit. But they did punch three quarter inch hole. Looks like, and then I'm sure they used the highest quality electrical tape to cover up. I don't even know what they're covering up right here. They probably skinned the cable or something. But the point is, this is a horrible install. You can't leave. This is a BNC. So this is coax here, RG59. That's a BNC fitting right there. This is their power. That's what that is. So you've got your power going out to the camera. You've got your video coming in. Um, it's just a poor install. If this is outside, this is a fail uh, of the greatest order because this, these things are going to corrode. They won't even make it a year. Um, that's, you really should mount a back box or at least a four square with a blank right here and put these connections inside of it so they're protected from the weather. So this one, this one we're going to give an F. Okay, so here's another uh, layout where the customer put the video recorder in a, in a closing cabinet. And so they mounted the cabinet or the video recorder to the cabinet vertically. They used tie wraps to do that. They brought the cables in. There's your network cable going out to your internet modem. Here's your power. They close the door. It's put away and clean. Um, I like it because it's out of the way. So I'd give that an A. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is a little different. There's no right or wrong place for home, uh, for the video recorder with home installations. I've seen people put them inside safes. I've seen them put them in boiler rooms. I've seen them put them uh, with their other computer equipment. I've seen them mount them behind credenzas to hide them. This is the first time I've seen somebody mount it to a wall. But they are proud of their video recorder because there it is on the wall. But I do like the way that they did the cable management. So these little uh, cable plates, you can get them at Home Depot. They're like a buck ninety, but they really clean up, you know, the penetration of drywall. So you got your cables coming in here for your cameras. You got your internet connection, and you got your power to the video recorder. So he doesn't really need to do anything because he's going to use this computer or this computer to play back and view the cameras live. But he was definitely proud of this video recorder to mount it on the wall that way. Um, 
I'm going to give it an A just because it's kind of pretty to look at.